Today I'm helping a friend out with the brakes on his car. It's either an Explorer or a Fusion. I don't know which car he's bringing, but whatever he's bringing, I'm gonna help him with it. And as it turns out, he brought his 2017 Ford Explorer. The first thing I did was loosen the lug nuts. And then I jacked it up. And then I positioned the jack stands and gently lowered the car back onto it. And next I removed the lug nuts. And then banged the wheel off. Cracked the brake fluid, reservoir. And then in preparation for installing new brake pads, I compressed the caliper piston to allow room for the new pads. I'm gonna remove the caliper with a 17 m M&M. If he was just doing pads, it'd be a wrap. Yep, take that off. There we go. So I got the first pad off and it looked pretty good. And you say these are squealing? There was noise from the front, yeah. Well, if we ain't gotta change the pad, what you say? Don't change it. Well, so these look good. Um, the Rotor is perfectly smooth. The pad still has tons of life left. So if the other side looks like this, I'm not gonna change the fronts. But if I were to continue, I would remove this bracket. There's another bolt on the backhand side. I remove this bracket, take the rotor off, and then reassemble. Um, again, I've already compressed the caliper, so I wouldn't have to do that. Reassemble everything and you'd be good to go. And the bolt to remove the bracket is right here and it can be removed with an 18 millimeter. I made sure to get this boot back on this slider because they were well lubed. And I'm gonna say these are good too. If you see there's a lot of meat left on this one and I don't know if you can see this angle but there's a lot of meat left on this outer one as well. So we're gonna leave the fronts on for now. Let's go to the rear. Now we're moving to the rears. I'm going to loosen the, uh, the rear lug nuts before I lift it. Even though with the parking brake on, you don't necessarily need to do that. Now I'm looking for a good spot to jack it up so that I can put the jack stand. And I'm going to use that spot right there. I think it will work, but we will see. Well, the jack points I used work. Let's get this wheel off. I'm glad these aren't the electronic parking brakes. These are the regular old school cable brakes, but with that rust, I am gonna go ahead and put some PB blaster on here before I try and take them off. So now I'm gonna take the caliper off the bracket with a 13 millimeter. Damn. Don't need bungee cords here because you can rest it right here on this linkage. Let me give a better shot of it. You can rest it right here, not doesn't put stress on the brake lines or the cable. And you can already tell here that this pad, this inner pad is very worn. And these may even be the original pads that came on the car. I'm not sure of that, but the way they look, they very well could be. Yeah, these look pretty bad. So we're definitely gonna replace these. 
And now I am going to remove the caliper bracket with a 15 mm &M. Bolt here and a bolt there. The literal the manual impact wrench. You just, here. And these rotors have a screw right here that you need to take out in order to take it off. And it is a T40 bit. Let's see if this does it. And I just broke off my bit in it. So that didn't do it. Is it the bit in there? Yep. While I look for a solution to getting another bit, I'm gonna hit it with some PB Blaster in hopes that it will make it come out easier. So I broke off my bit in this screw, started it soaking, went and got another T40, and I put one lug nut back on so I'll have something to pull against. So we'll see if this gives me enough torque to loosen that little screw. It is not, it does not want to come out. All right, let's try it like this. There we go. It was feeling kind of dicey, but I got it out. And this is my first time ever using this trick. Oh, and it, it doesn't want to come out. So I'm definitely going to soak the other side. Damn. This screw right here, boy. I'm putting some anti-seize on it when I put it back in. All right. So now this rotor should just come right off. <clears throat> and I should know better. So I went and got a bigger hammer. And this will do it. It has to do it. I have faith. Yeah, finally. <laughs> finally. Finalmente. Yeah, so these were definitely the original ones and have not been removed since the car was in the factory. All right, let's clean this up and throw the new one on. Let's see how clean this gets. I'm gonna clean the back side of the rotor first because it is protected by the shield and I won't have access to it once I mount it. And then when it's mounted, it'd be very easy to clean the front side. I use my thread chaser to clean out the threads for the screw that holds the rotor on. And then I reinstall the rotor. These rotors were coated with some sort of oil. I imagine it was some sort of anti-corrosion oil. I'm cleaning it all off. I was comparing the new hardware that I picked up with the old, and it does not look exactly the same, but it looks to be right. Yeah, and I definitely feel better with new hardware. So I'm gonna take it off, take off the old one and fit the new one to make sure that I'm not crazy. No, it's actually a perfect fit. All right, so I'm gonna take off all the old hardware, clean up the, the bracket a little, and then put the new hardware in and lube it up.
definitely want to clean this out. Look at that. It's a lot of rust and whatnot. Now these are orientation specific. So just be mindful putting them on. Actually, you can't even put them on the wrong way. All right, well, got them loaded. One thing I will do is check the movement of these slides. Even if the slides are moving well, it's a good idea to remove them and apply fresh lube. I'll link a video where I do it in the description. These seem to be moving okay. So I'm going to throw everything back. I also applied new lube to where the pad and the hardware touch. Just a very little bit. I also put a little Put a little on the wings, call them wings, I don't know what they really call it, but where the pad slides in, and now I'm just gonna slide the pad in. All right, there you go. Do it with the other side. Now you won't be able to see because I'm doing it on the opposite side of the rotor, but it's the same game. So, I had to go rent a tool because I have the twist tool and the compress tool, but I don't have the twist and compress tool because I was twisting and it wasn't going anywhere and I was compressing and it didn't go anywhere. So let's see if this does the trick. This caliper doesn't move easy. So the way this works is you position it, then you back out this section until this part, this little arched part meets up with the outside of the caliper. Then you twist in and hopefully compress the caliper. And it seems to be working. So let's see if that is enough. And it is still not enough. Yeah, this tool is the way to go. So these pads were very worn. I'm having to compress it a lot. Let's see if that's enough. Yes, finally. So it is now compressed enough for me to go ahead and slide the caliper back onto the bracket and go ahead and start putting them in. All right, I'm gonna play the same game on the other side. And a note about um, applying brake disquiet between this and this, with these pads that have this backing like this, you're okay without the brake disquiet because this material does that on its own. So I'll play the same game on the other side and we're done. So now I'm doing the driver's side, which is a lot worse looking than the passenger side. I'm gonna get this wheel off and show you what I mean. After doing the passenger side, I thought the driver's side would be easy, but the screw holding on the rotor stripped. The bit held up, but the screw didn't. My stud extractor didn't work. So I ended up just drilling it out. All right, so I got the head of the screw out and that should let me take the rotor off, but I do not know what I'm gonna do about putting a new screw in. Now that screw is just to hold it on while you do work on the vehicle. So we may go without it if I can't find one quickly locally. But after that hiccup, the rest was just like the passenger side. Ooh wee. Yeah, this pad is all the way gone. Oh yeah, all the way gone. Check out this pad, this pad is metal. That's metal, there's no more pad here. So that is the difference between a new pad and the bad. Look how much is gone. Damn. Yeah, baby. <laughs> because 
since I don't have that screw to replace it, I'm just using a lug nut. And I do the same thing on my CX-5. All right, so this was hard to compress and I needed some leverage. So what I'm gonna do is mount the bracket without the rotor installed, hold, put this on, and hopefully I'll make it easier for me to turn. So I mounted the bracket and the caliper back on because I was having the time holding the caliper and twisting this in. Hopefully this will give me enough, enough leverage. Ah, here we go. All right. I got ready to slide this on, but look, there's some gunk there. So I got to get all that off. All right, that's not perfect, but it's a lot better. So now it should go on all the way. When reattaching the caliper, you do need another wrench to hold the hex portion that is below the bolt that you're reinstalling. Whew, we're done. Well, put the wheel back on, lower it, clean up. But, we're, you know, yeah, yeah. After a few hiccups, I had him on his way. My main projects are my 89 Chevy truck, my 95 Civic, and my 99 Golf. If you'd like to check them out, I have playlists on all of them. For more car content, check out my channel, MaxVids. Thanks for watching. Take care.